The Franciscan Montessori Earth School, St. Francis Academy, provides students from early childhood through young adolescence the tools to acquire individual fulfillment, academic excellence, moral and spiritual development, confidence, and independence for lifelong learning. Through the academic and experiential learning process developed by Maria Montessori and influenced by the spirituality of St. Francis, students learn to care for and respect themselves, others, and the earth. More than a century ago, Dr. Maria Montessori made a simple observation. Given the right materials and the appropriate environment, young children work spontaneously to explore and learn about the world around them. She went on to build around this principle an educational method that fosters independence, responsibility, and a lifelong love of learning. Today, Montessori education is the largest single pedagogy in the world, with nearly 8,000 schools, more than half of them in the United States. In 1977, Mother Francine Cardew and Mother Mary Michael Costello of the Franciscan Sisters of the Eucharist, sensing a deep connection between Montessori and St. Francis, founded the Franciscan Montessori Earth School. I feel that it's so important that Franciscan and Montessori come together to educate the full child. We are a composite of body and soul and if we can release the intellect as part of our body piece and the spiritual together, the whole person has an opportunity to be integrated into a whole human being, one who is filled with the desire to move and grow and study and learn and make a difference in the world. Dr. Montessori's method in relationship to the spirituality of Francis give the strength and the tools and the reflection and the ability to set themselves into a whole process of life that brings them into relationship with themselves, with their families, with the broader community and with the world. Today, the Franciscan Montessori Earth School brings this unique blend of Montessori philosophy and Franciscan spirituality to 300 students, from three-year-olds to teenagers. Dr. Montessori called her first classroom the Casa dei Bambini, or Children's House. Here, Children from three to six years old work to construct themselves with concrete experiences and precisely crafted materials. The Montessori classroom is really a small community and the children learn to function in that community. A big part of their work is going through the whole process of socialization. The younger children learn not only from the guide but also from older children. They learn cooperation. All of that is part of becoming a social creature and, and living in a community. Exercises of practical life develop the child's sense of order and build independence. Sensorial materials help refine the child's perceptions of dimension, color, sound, texture, taste, and even smell. Children learn letter shapes and sounds by tracing letters cut from sandpaper. They use the movable alphabet to write words, sentences, and even stories. Mathematics are experienced concretely, as children manipulate materials representing numbers from one to 10 and up into the hundreds and thousands. Outdoor environments provide a place of peace and a connection to the earth and to living things. Although founded by the Franciscan Sisters of the Eucharist, the school is not part of the parochial system. Instead, religious education is given through a unique Montessori-based approach. The Catechesis of the Good Shepherd is a methodology that has a wonderful marriage of Montessori principles, and it's a place where the mystery of God meets the mystery of the child. Any work that you would do in the catechesis, even if it's something like hand washing or polishing, your same object is there to get fine motor control. 
However, because of the environment and the milieu of what this is, I would say you meet someone. What you really are doing with children is building the reflective or contemplative mind, and so their spirits are open to the presence of God. For the elementary child, Montessori appeals to the newly developing powers of reason and imagination, and to the drive for social interaction. The classroom environment changes to accommodate these new powers. Through a series of stories called The Great Lessons, supported by experiments, demonstrations, and independent work, the children discover the universe and everything in it. Students explore the formation of stars, planets, and galaxies, the miracles of life on Earth, and the wonders made possible by the human achievements of language and mathematics. Students use concrete materials as a bridge to abstraction in mathematics, science, language, and other areas. Outside the classroom, students build their connection to the natural world. When you enter into the dynamics in the elementary classroom, and I think particularly in the older, the upper elementary, classrooms. We really work and speak and enliven that whole dimension of community that is already in the child. In the upper elementary, students build on their explorations and discoveries of the lower grades. Research and discovery go deeper into the natural world as the students' abilities develop. In mathematics, the passage to abstraction continues as students work with ever larger numbers and more complex concepts. Social development continues within the classroom, and students expand their educational experience to include encounters with the outside world. At the middle school level, students beginning their transition to adulthood experience hands-on academic engagement, societal roles and responsibilities, and real, meaningful work. Students study the story of humanity through reading, writing, research, and direct experience. Students use science to explore the world around them and the human role within it. Students continue mathematics and foreign language study in small groups according to ability. Two languages are offered at several levels, and math groups range from pre-algebra to algebra and beyond. At this time of intense social development, Community interaction and practical work are perhaps the most important piece of the curriculum. Students take on responsibility in every area of community life, growing in independence and self-reliance. And students carry their engagement beyond the classroom, reaching out into the community in service projects. In one way, I think of the whole school as kind of a seedbed for things that will come alive. And that fills me with a great deal of hope because it's just like a garden when you can relate that to what the long-term process is. It's kind of exciting to know that a whole bunch of life is stirring and it eventually will blossom when it's time.